You're listening to Coffee Break Flight Instruction by M0A.com. Flight train tips in 15 minutes or less. Hey everyone, Jason Schaffer here of M0A.com alongside certified flight instructor extraordinaire, Mr. Larry Diamond. Welcome to Coffee Break Flight Instruction. Flight train tips in 15 minutes or less. Uh, this is episode number two, and let's go ahead and let's start that clock. Talking today about no-flap landings, a maneuver that's often under-practiced and can sometimes come up as a big surprise on your private and certainly your commercial pilot check ride. So I wanted to take a moment to kind of share this with you guys. First and foremost, why do I practice a no-flap landing? Well like I shared in Flight Train Radio uh, a few months ago, uh, my student who had an alternator failure in a Cessna which had electric flaps. So everything goes, you're, you're so worried that the radios are gone, you're losing this, you lost the GPS, uh, it's time to come into land, you say, oh, I forgot, I lost my flaps too. So now, not only are you not talking to anybody, have no means of really navigating everything else, turning lights on, anything else, now you're landing no flap as well. Now his situation was really hairy because he was at night as well. So night landing, no landing light, no flaps, no way to communicate his issue to anybody. Forget squawking, you know, 7600 because no one's going to see that as well. So really a very tough no flap landing to uh, uh, make there. And something, and that's really the main reason we practice it. And one thing Larry, you know, and I have been talking about is that different sight picture uh, as compared to a normal land in. Larry, I'll let you share a little bit about that. Um, so normally what I uh, have my students do is they always have to get a sight picture for everything. So they're kind of looking for the kind of the oblong, a little bit different shape where it's kind of wider, uh, rectangular on the bottom, I guess you can call it trapezoidal. And uh, the one thing they're going to see is they're not going to be coming in at a three degree glide angle. So I kind of have them see what a three degree glide angle is and then from there what they're going to do is then they're going to kind of see what the difference is with the flaps and actually what I do is I kind of lead up to it first I start with full flaps then I go to two flaps and I go to one mm. and then I show them the difference between all three and then mm. gradually work up to the no flap landing which actually sometimes they usually do pretty a lot better because they're actually controlling their airspeed a lot better they're controlling their attitude a lot better and they're also seeing they're coming in a little bit faster so I always kind of prepare them for that too. Yeah, absolutely. And I love what you said about that sight picture. And you know how big we are on that from reading The Secret to Perfect Landings. You know, it's all about burning that picture into your brain. That's why I try to get the students. So I love your, your logical progression you made. And I hope you guys caught that. You know, come in with a 30 degree flap landing. Come in then with a 20, then with a 10, then with a no flap, and see what that sight picture looks like. You know, all in an attempt to try to hit the same point. Um, and it's going to take a different approach each and every time, and most importantly, a different sight picture, uh, you know, each and every time. You know, some things to understand, you're going to come in faster. So maybe we need to, uh, I'm not saying you got to necessarily extend your downwind and make a longer file or anything like that. I really think you just need to manage your airspeed better. And how can we manage our airspeed better? Well, by adjusting our pitch, adjusting our throttle, maybe a little bit more aggressively uh, than we normally would to help bring that airplane down without increasing our airspeed. The biggest error, and I'm sure you're on page with this too, Larry, no flap landings, man, I'm high, how do I get down? I want to push the nose forward. Then we increase our airspeed. I've got no way to bleed off that airspeed anymore. You've got to manage your altitude with the power and leave your pitch, you know, where it's at to help control that airspeed. Can you, uh, any thoughts on that, Larry? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that goes back to your primary, uh, when you get out to the practice pattern, almost your second or third lesson, we're doing different kind of airspeeds and holding our altitude and we're using different power management and, and also it applies to your IFR when you kind of like go over transition over to that one too it's all about pitch power and performance mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely so guys uh, hope you enjoyed this episode of coffee break flight instruction by m0a.com flight train tips in 15 minutes or less on behalf of behalf of myself extraordinaire Larry Diamond the most important thing to remember is that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya.